to go into our session for today and we have um, Jim Wallace and Brett Carey here today with us from Star Financial and they're going to be talking um, to you guys about your financial plan and ways to do that. All right, so let's give them a round of applause. Exercise for the day. There you go. There you go. Did uh, everybody get a copy of this? Yeah. Okay. That's uh, just something we put together for you guys to kind of use as a baseline as, as you go through and, and do your financial projections and your financial plan. Um, so we, we just wanted to make sure everybody had a copy of that and we'll go through and, and talk about it as, as we work our way through the presentation. Uh, my name's Brett, as Caitlin said, and this is Jim. Um, we are both commercial bankers at Star Financial Bank uh, here in Marion. Um, so we, we work day to day with businesses, new businesses, uh, exist, existing businesses, uh, loan money, uh, handle handle things for, for their deposit services and, and anything financial related that they need. Um, so that's kind of our background and what we do. Um, I understand you guys are pretty early in, in this entire process, uh, so you're just kind of formalizing your ideas, is that right? Your business concepts, everybody Everybody come up with, with a business idea so far? Good, good. Okay. Uh, you got any good ones you want to share? You'd have to kill me. <laughs> you might take it. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? You might take it. So oh, that's there we go. <laughs> a little secretive now. Yeah. That's all right. I understand that. What, um, so, so we're going to be talking about your financial plans today. What, when, when I say financial plans, what, what's the first thing that comes to mind for you guys? Money. Money? Yeah. It's an obvious one. Um, anything else? Nothing else? Expenses. Expenses? Sure. Yeah, so expenses, sales, um, you know, those are, those are two of the main things because, you know, you're not going to have any money to manage, any financial plans to manage if you don't generate sales, right? So I guess that's, you know, the one, one takeaway I want you guys to take from this. Um, how, how you generate your sales is going to be a very, very important part of your financial plan. Um, you may think that that applies more to the marketing aspect of it, but it's it's all directly related to your financial plans. So what's what's a good financial plan show? Anybody have an idea? Budgets. Budgets, sure. Yeah. Yeah, great. How much? How much it's going to cost you to start your business? How much cash or capital you need to open the doors to your business? Right? Because if you don't have the cash to get it started, um, it's never going to get started. Right? So that's that's the first place we're going to go within the financial plan is is how much cash you need to start your business and why you need that cash, what, what it's going to be used for. Um, where you will get that money, is it money that you personally are going to put in, are you going to get an investment from family members, are you going to get loans from a bank, where is that capital going to come from? Does that make sense? Some of the things I think of you need to, for what you'll need that cash to start up for, um, you need a building to operate out of, what do you buy it, lease it, rent, whatever. Uh, you need to buy the equipment to run your business. You might need some vehicles for that business. Um, any other, I mean, basically equipment, trucks, buildings, those are some things that come to our mind. Go ahead and jump ahead another one. So, 
another aspect of, of the financial plan is is building projections um, and what I mean by that is is projecting how you're going to sell your product or sell your service how much money you're going to generate from that um, what your expenses are and how much money you're actually going to net or make uh, from that um, and and you need to be pretty realistic uh, with with your projections. Um, new businesses starting out, it's it's very very tough to generate profits from day one. You know, it's it's going to take you some time to establish your customer base, establish your clientele, uh, and to generate those first sales. So you're going to have kind of a lag time between your initial cost to start your business and before you start actually generating any money, right? Does that make sense? Okay. About once a week I have somebody come into my office and say, I've got a great idea for a business. Can you give me a loan? I say, well, let's start with the, the projections. Let's start with the forecast. They don't have the forecast, so we can't go anywhere. We can't go any further from that. So one of the first things that Brett just mentioned, you know, anytime you want to you want to get involved in starting a business, you have to be able to project your forecast. You have to forecast your your budget. You have to know how much money you're going to be making, how much cash you got to bring to the table, the expenses that are going to come with that, people that you're going to have to pay. And we usually like to see two years of, of projections and forecast. So we'll uh, we'll start jumping ahead a little bit and jump into the to the first. Uh, bullet point there, cash requirements. Um, we touched on it a little bit earlier, startup costs, startup funds, what it's going to cost you, uh, what you think it's going to cost you on a month-to-month -month basis to actually run your business. So if you look at the, the handout we gave to you for CW Supply Company, uh, we'll just kind of walk you through this as, as kind of a live <laughs> example. And, and this is something Jim and I just put together. Um, it's it's our business that we're going to start. That is. Anybody want to guess what our business is going to be? What is it? No lungs. No, no, we do that. No. For, yeah. We want to have some fun with it. <laughs> uh, we're going to sell toilets. Everybody needs a toilet, right? I did not think that. You didn't think that at all? No. Huh? <laughs> well, sounds fun hey, to us. Yeah. We're going to sell toilets. We're looking for something that everybody needs. Everybody needs toilets. Yeah. Look all around the high school, there's toilets. So, so there we go. That's our business. That is what CW Supply Company is. It is a toilet wholesaler. Okay. So if, if you look at, look at the first page of that where the top of it is cash requirements uh, and it goes into startup funds, this is what we're estimating that we need in order to start our business. We need a office and warehouse space so we can warehouse all of our toilets. Uh, so we're gonna have to build some inventory and we need somewhere to put all our inventory. So we're gonna need storage racks to stack all our toilets on, forklifts to lift them up, and we're gonna need a computer system to manage our inventory, uh, manage our accounting, uh, manage our, our sales pipeline. We're also going to need uh, some vehicles, a uh, semi-truck for distribution, for going and picking up our inventory. Uh, we're going to need some vans for deliveries, and we're going to need a utility truck for any services that might need, be needed on, on the products that we're selling. Okay, So, so that comes out to around $485,000 in equipment, buildings. Everybody see that? Everybody following me? Okay, so then we look at we look at what we think, what we project it's going to take to run this business. Uh, so so down at the bottom, we we estimate one month's worth of expenses for our business, uh, and then then we take that and multiply it by three to get a to get three months worth, so we can kind of have that cash set aside for the first three months while we're ramping up our sales, okay? So, all in all, this shows that we need 
uh, between all the equipment needs, the, the warehouse, and three months worth of, of expenses of purchasing inventory, um, paying our salespeople, uh, and things like that. It's not cheap to sell toilets. Costs a lot of money. So the, the next segment we're going to look at is, so we've established that we need $650,000 to start our business. Where is that going to come from? Where are we going to get $650,000? Are we going to put all that money in ourselves? Um, no, we're not. Uh, are we going to get it all through bank loans? No, because bankers won't loan you a hundred percent of what you need to start your business. They're going to make you put some cash into it yourself. Okay, so you jump on ahead there, Jim. So if you guys flip to the to the back side of that page and it shows cash sources. This is an outline of, of where Jim and I think we're going to get all of our funding uh, to start our business. We're each going to put some of our own money into it uh, and then we're also going to get a loan from our parents for another portion of it. Uh, and then we kind of itemized out down below um, some loans that we're going to attempt to obtain from a bank. So the, the first loan, a working capital line of credit, anybody know what that is? Any ideas? It's a, it's a form of a short term loan uh, that, that we'll be able to use to purchase our inventory um, or once we make a sale uh, to carry I guess the, the, the time between the sale and when you actually collect your cash, we'll be able to carry that within our line of credit. So essentially what it is is to use to purchase our inventory, okay? So then we have a couple long-term loans listed, one for equipment and vehicles, 200000 um, and we're estimating that will be a five-year term. Uh, which is a pretty standard term for equipment loans or vehicle loans. Uh, and then the real estate loan to purchase our warehouse and our office space. Um, and we're estimating that will be a 15-year loan, which again is, a, is another pretty standard uh, term for a real estate loan. Does anybody remember the first thing we're going to need if we go to a bank and ask them for this loan? There we go. Good job forecasts and a business plan, which I think you talked about last week with Mr. Drook. Uh, All right. Any, any questions? Please feel free to interrupt us if you have any questions as we're, as we're going through this. Okay. Kind of, we just touched on that, our cash sources. So, so the next phase, which will be the next page, uh, is, is the first financial statement. And it is the income statement. Anybody know what an income statement is? Anybody care to share with us? No one? Tough crowd. Go ahead. How much money you get? What? How much money you're producing? Yeah, how much money you're taking in and how much money you're sending out through expenses, right? It's going to be your yeah. sales minus your expenses and that will get you your net income. Um, there's a lot of moving parts of that, but it's pretty simple. And like you said, it's how much money you're coming in versus how much money's going out, and that's what's going to be your profit or your loss. Um, so yeah, everybody, we, yeah, see it up front. Revenue is defined as services rendered and or product sales. The expenses will be the cost that's incurred during the, during the year. Um, those costs can be interest expense, cost of goods sold, payroll, administration, taxes, and then um, those two together net out your net income. When you have more money coming in than going out, you have a net profit. 
when you have more expenses than you have revenue, you're going to have a net loss. As bankers, we like to see a net profit. Yes, we do. Um, Jimmy mentioned something, and if you if you look at the income statement we handed out, there's a line item for interest expense. What's that? Anybody know? Absolutely. Yeah. So so when you borrow money uh, from Jim at the bank, uh, there's an interest rate tied to it, right? So a 4% interest rate or a 5% interest rate. So if you borrow $100,000, you have to pay back that 100000 plus whatever that 5% interest rate amounts to. Does that make sense? Sure. Is it business loan, a car loan, a home loan. Um, if you're going to borrow money, it's always good, more than likely going to be interest, interest on that loan. Business owners hate paying interest. Bankers love collecting interest. That's how we make our money, is, is companies like your guys' borrowing money from us and paying interest back. Right? When I, was in, when I was in school, I always wondered how a bank made money. I thought a bank was just somewhere where people put money in and take it out, or you get loans, you pay back the loan. Uh, and that's that. It, that answered my question. <laughs> you got to pay interest on the money that you're loaning. Uh, so, any questions? Is four percent a good number? I mean, it could vary. Yeah. Realistically. Yeah. Like if you if someone yeah. walked in right now, is four percent a good number that they would, would take? Yeah. 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 <coughs> I'd say that's a that's a good starting yeah, point for you guys. Say, like, crazy. What's that? What's the number? Seven's not crazy. It's high. I mean, there there are a lot of variables that go into an interest rate. We don't just you know you can't right. just, you can't just pick it off of a sheet. You know, it's going to be the risk involved in the loan, the person getting the loan, with the collateral that's securing the loan. Seven's high, but it's not crazy high. I mean, when you get in above ten percent, you're talking high interest rates. But when again, they vary over time. They go up and they go down. Um, a lot of Depends on the market, but I mean, yeah, four four percent is a good rate. But again, if you're talking a car loan, you're gonna want to get in between three to five percent. You know, a house loan, three to five percent. It, it, it all it all depends on the risk involved. Who who do you think would pay a higher interest rate? A company that's been around for fifty years uh, has a has a very well established clientele or a brand new business that has zero sales right now? Who's, who's gonna pay the higher interest rate if they're both borrowing the same amount of money? Who's the riskier company? The, the new one. The new one. Yeah. The one Why that is that? Have. Because they're more risky and you guys are putting money in yeah. risky. Yeah. Yep, exactly. Exactly, good. Just a couple examples on interest rate. Why are credit cards risky uh, for a bank? Anybody have an idea? Yeah, yeah. Um, another thing, there. Jim mentioned collateral earlier. Uh, credit card has no collateral. Um, you know what collateral is? Yeah. What's that? Money to back up the money that you're borrowing. Yeah. Yeah. Like a certain money. Yeah. An yeah. asset. Like a, like if you borrow money to buy a car, the car is collateral for that loan, right? Yeah, if you if you don't make payments, they'll take the car. Exactly. Yep. Exactly. So 
a loan with better collateral is less risky because if you default on that loan, eventually, I mean, the bank can, can take that collateral. That's the worst case scenario. We don't, we don't like talking about that. <laughs> how, how to determine your revenue? Um, you know, that's what are your revenue centers? Who is going to buy your product? Um, what are they going to use that product for? Um, in, in our example, we're selling toilets. So who's our target market? Anybody, anybody that lives in a, a house, right? Anybody that owns a home? You know, every, everybody has a toilet in their home. I'm gonna work on selling to the schools. Schools, yeah, any businesses. Um, so, you know, the population in the United States is, what, 350 million or something like that? Uh, there's a lot of toilets in the United States. Um, so that's, in our example, you know, our, our target market is homeowners, is businesses, is schools, um, you know, any, any type of building or building owner. The question was, uh, how, you, how do you determine your revenue? We've got, I and mean, we're just selling basic toilets, but we can't sell those toilets for $300 a piece because Lowe's and Home Depot down the road are gonna be selling the same toilets for $75. So we have to, in your business plan, when you're determining your revenue, what you're gonna sell and how much you're gonna sell it for, you're gonna to have to think about your competitors. You're gonna to have to think about what they're selling that, um, you know, what they might be, if somebody's selling the same thing you are, what they're gonna be selling it for. Do you have a better product than them? Then you can sell for a little more. It's the same product, we, you have to be around the same price. Um, yeah, there's lots of factors that go into determining how much you're gonna, how you're gonna determine your revenue. Anybody wanna share any of their uh, products that they're gonna sell? Or price range? How they came up with that price range? Why? Still a little early for you guys to have prices on, on the product you're selling, probably. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Makes sense. Any any questions on anything on the income statement before we move ahead? You guys are awfully quiet and it makes me nervous. No, no, no. So, so if there was if there was parentheses around that bottom number, that would show a loss. So, so what what it does is it takes your gross sales at the top minus your total expenses to come up with that number. So, if your total expenses were higher, that would be a net loss. It'd be a negative number. Yeah. Usually, when you're looking at a uh, an income statement and it's in parentheses, that usually means a negative number. Case. Sometimes in the negative numbers are red, sometimes they're in parentheses. Any other questions before we move on? Nothing? All right. We'll move on uh, to the balance sheet. Oh, yes. Yeah, that's that's built into our payroll number. That's our payroll expense. Yeah. We didn't. I guess we didn't specify. Are you talking number of employees or? No, I'm just talking about how much you would pay that, and that oh. would like definitely the profit. Sure. Right. Yeah. Right. See the payroll number down there, two hundred forty thousand. It's a huge number of your expenses. You know, we came up with this great idea we got a great model for selling toilets we think we're gonna make a bunch of money and then we forget that we got to pay our employees you know you got to keep your employees happy to, to keep the good business model so that's a big part of, uh, of your expenses is paying your employees it's a big part of any businesses expenses uh, generally it's it's one of their largest expense items is people um, you know especially in, in banking um, that is a big big number Anything else? Good question. Touch on the balance sheet. Okay. Anybody know what a balance sheet is? 
how you keep track of your expenses and organize way you track of how much you've got in the bank and yeah. how much you're taking out. Yeah, yeah. Not not necessarily your expenses, but it, it tracks, yeah, cash. Um, and if you flip flip over to the last page, it has a sample balance sheet. So so what it is is it's a it's an itemized detailed listing of all of your assets and all of your liabilities. Um, everybody know what a liability is? What's that? Liability. It's what you owe. Yeah. It's money you owe. It's loans. Um, it's where your bank debt's going to be. What loans you owe. Assets are what you have, what you own. Cash accounts receivable, um, the building that we own, the equipment that we own, everything that we bought is what the company owns. Liabilities are the accounts payable, the, the equipment loan, the car loan, the building loan. Does that make sense? Yes. So what if you if you take what your total assets is and you subtract your total li liabilities, what's that number? Owner's equity. Owner's equity. What is that? <laughs> you guys can read. I'll give it to you on that. Yeah, I mean, you're right. It's it's your assets minus your out liabilities. So what does that mean? Any idea? So if, if you were to um, shut your business down, if we were to shut our toilet business down after the first year, um, sell the rest of the inventory we had in stock, sell the, all of our equipment, all of our vehicles, and sell all of our property. What would we have? What would we do with all that money? We'd have to pay back our loans first. Okay, so we pay back all of our loans, which is our total liabilities, right? So then, what do we have left? This would show we have a hundred thousand dollars left. What's that? Hundred thousand dollars. That's yeah. That's our cash. That's that's our equity, owner's equity. That's the value of the business, the net worth of the business. Okay. So so if you look at it as if you would liquidate everything today, pay off all your debts, that's how much money you would take home. Okay. Let's take a look at it on the balance sheet. You guys see the example Kinda we gave you? To see it there. The, uh, yeah. You guys take out the balance sheet and look at that, and Jimmy will walk you through it a little more. On the top, you got your assets. Like it, like I said, this is what the company owns. We've got cash in the bank. Um, and again, when you go back to those forecasts, we're going to want to see what your year one and your year two will look like. You got so so your current assets, which will be defined as. It's, it's some cash inventory or receivables. It's a, a current asset is something that can be that either is cash or can be converted to cash relatively quickly. Uh, what is accounts receivable? Accounts receivable is money that is owed to you. If we sell thirty toilets to Marion High School, we give them. Yeah, we give them terms to pay us within 30 days. So we don't have that cash in hand, but we have a receivable. We have money that's due to us. Does that make sense? So we've already we've already made the sale to Marion High School. They have just not paid us yet. Does that make sense? Okay. So you know, it, it varies business to business um, and, and types of industries. Sometimes Sometimes companies give give you or vendors give you ten days to pay. Sometimes they give you thirty. Uh, some industries stretch it out even longer, sixty or ninety days. Um, I guess the one that comes to mind would be like the the automotive industry. Most of most of those 
uh, types of companies get stretched out by the big Chevy and, and Ford and Dodge. So they generally don't get paid for 60 to 90 days, where most of it's under 30. It's going to be up to you and your business plan how long you want yeah. to uh, how, how long you want to make your receivables. That's uh, yeah, as we, Jimmy said. If we tell the high school, if we tell American Community Schools, we'll sell you so many toilets and you owe us thirty thousand dollars. Will you pay us within thirty days? Then you just owe us that thirty thousand dollars. If you go over those thirty days, then we add on a percentage to that and you owe us more. Go ahead. Does that have to Most, most of the time it's all paid at once with businesses you're dealing with. So we have a question? You have a question? What you essentially do is, is you charge them interest, kind of like a bank does. Because if, if you look at it from that perspective, you're essentially loaning them money at that time, right? Because they, they owe you money. That's a debt for them. <coughs> yep. Good question. So current assets is cash, inventory, and receivables. Um, your non-current assets is or tangible assets, hard hard assets, equipment, um, the vehicle, and the building. So you'll see there that the total assets after year one is six hundred twenty-five thousand. Uh, below that, is your liabilities that Brett mentioned. Current liabilities are liabilities that are due to you within 30 days. Um, accounts payable and, and your line of credit, that, those are bills that you need to be paying within 30 days or within the year. What is the line of credit? The line of credit is a loan, a bank loan that we talked about earlier um, that would generally be used to purchase inventory. Your non-current liabilities, long-term liabilities, stuff that loans that you're going to be paying over more than 12 months. Um, our parents loaned us some money to start our toilet business, to start CW Supply. So we have our parents' loan. Uh, we bought the equipment and vehicles. We're going to be paying that loan back, and then we have our building loan, our real estate loan. Those are liabilities that that we need to pay. That's going to take us. The terms are longer than 12 months. Um, so those are non-current liabilities. Uh, current and non-current liabilities, you'll see that equals our total liabilities below $525,000. Uh, the assets minus the liabilities equals your owner's equity. So you see that we have $100,000 of, of owner's equity in the company after year one. Any questions? You're doing okay on time. So we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about your projections um, and, and where your research comes from uh, in order to make those projections as, as realistic as possible. Um, Jimmy and I went out and did, did a lot of web research for our toilet business uh, to get an idea of, of who our target market is, how big that market is, who our competitors are. Um, and, and pricing strategies. So the internet is a valuable tool for that. Um, any any kind of publications. Um, you know, if you're if you're going to start making some sort of product, um, you know, catalogs that would have a similar product is a is a great place to go to to find out some industry information. Some pricing information, um, competitors' websites, um, all great, great places to, to start. Yeah, yeah I mean, if you're, if you're doing research on the internet, uh, when you're citing those sources, make sure they're good sources. Um, when you guys are searching your business plan later and you guys are trying to put it together, if you guys want facts and good information on, on that business, Go to what they said here, .gov, .edu, or .org. Those are the most credible sites. So that will give you the best information. Any websites that end in those. Um, Another website you might you might utilize uh, is 
the Small Business Administration website, which is sba.gov. Um, it has a lot of information about about small business loans um, and and different industries and and industries that that they will loan money to and industries that they won't loan money to. So sba.gov would be another great great tool for you guys as you move forward through this process. So to to finish up. Um, your financial planning, um, you'll want to, you'll kind of want to highlight the high points of your plan and, and put it kind of in a in a paragraph form uh, that's that's easy to read. That will take the most important and most valuable points from your projections and convey it in words to whoever's going to read it. Um, so you might talk about. Um, sales, uh, sales growth, um, startup funding, uh, and things like that within your summary uh, as a way to to just show um, the the important part important parts of your financial plan. Make yourself different from your competitors. Everybody's going to come and say, "This is your passion. This is what you want to do." Everybody's going to say that. Make yourself different than what the next person is going to do. Bring a new idea to your business plan. Impress somebody. When you guys have those plans, I don't know, they might have to give me a call. I want to come back and hear some of these ideas since nobody's Definitely. sharing them quite yet. Yeah. You guys have any questions for us? No? No questions? All right. Thanks for letting us come today, guys. Yeah. Appreciate it. Thank you.